Lives Are We Supposed to Start, the podcast. Ready, one, two, three. I'm killing it. Crushed it. Crushed it. I mean, you are a top podcaster in the country. <laughs> Let's not go that far. Yeah. It's- I'm a top clapper. Yeah, but I, I'm going to lean into top podcaster. I think I'm the top clapper in this building. That's about I think as you're far the as we top can get. clapper on podcasts. <laughs> Are we the only podcast that claps? Probably. Pumps, what have you had it with? Okay, what I've had it with is when clients and children solicit your opinion and advice on a matter, and then they argue with you about your opinion. Clients, I can take it a little better because they're paying me. And so we can go round and round for, you know, an hour. And I'm like, okay, great. I just made an hour's worth of crap and you're not going to do it. I mean, I've made money. You're still not going to do it. But at least I know I've told you. And then I can just note in my file, this is what I told them. So when they, you know, do something completely opposite, I can be like, one month, not my bad. It's my children that bug the fuck out of me (laughs) when they do it. Because For example, my darling daughter yesterday was texting me about an issue and I gave her three texts back. Like I sent the first text. That wasn't good enough. So I had to give her another one. The third time I just said, I'm done. I I can't do this anymore. Well, I don't know why you're being so rude. I'm like, you asked and then you're arguing with me about it. Don't fucking ask because you obviously don't want to come to a solution. This is something that's really epidemic. People that ask for advice, and then when they receive said advice, right. solicited advice, right? they bicker and argue with you about it. Like, I have this with clients all the time. All the time. Half the time, I'm like, then you pick it out. <laughs> right. <laughs> you yeah. know, I want, they give me their inspiration photos. This is the vibe I want. I do one curated look for them. They're like, yeah, I want to see one more option. Then I give them another option. I want to see another option. And then at some point I realize this person's the problem. Right. They don't want to pick an item. They just want to be in the problem instead of moving into the solution. Yes. Or just drop it. Like if if you're not going to take any action on it, then I'm not going to waste my time talking about it. The last thing I'm going to do, like let's say I have like a dishwasher repairman come to the house. Right. The last thing I'm going to do is jump in and say, (laughs) hey, have you tried to maybe screw this in over here? Right. Because I'm not an expert in that area. Could not agree more. That's exactly it. Same with an HVAC repairman. I'm not going to jump in because I'm not an expert in that area. So if you hire an expert, of course, give feedback. Right. But if you hire somebody for their expertise, then you defer to their expertise. Right. Or you simply find another expert. And in the case of the kids... If you don't like your parents' advice, don't ask your parents for advice. Correct. It's a real simple solution. Yes. It's kind of the same thing at the doctor. I'm not going to walk into the doctor and argue with them about what my blood test results say. You know why? (laughs) Because I don't fucking know. Right. You're not a doctor. I'm not a a doctor. That's why I'm paying them. Right. Now, I had a client, I think we went round and round about an issue that was just as plain as the nose is on your face, but she just wanted one particular answer. I've got my eye on one answer. And finally, I was just like, you can do that, but it's going to have really bad consequences. But at this fucking point, swing for the fences. I get to that point sometimes yeah. with my clients. I'm like, I think that would look bad. I, I, I do not advise <laughs> I do not advise that fabric or I don't advise that paint color. And then they just keep on, keep on, keep on. And when you get beaten down so much in your field and your area of expertise, right. finally, I'm like, fuck it. Paint your walls, Fuchsia. I don't give a shit. Right. <laughs> Like, do it. I don't care anymore. What I'm looking at now is not to be creative, but is to end this project with you. Absolutely. That's what I'm looking for because all of your criticism and like I had a client once and he fought with me about every decision I made. Why did you pick that fabric? Well, because I have this talent where I think these two things would look good together. (laughs) Right. And a 25 year (laughs) career to back that up. I know, but why? And I'm like, I can't really explain it other than... Trust me, it will look good. And then finally, I'm just like, you just do it. Do whatever fabric she wants. Right. It's like, why did you hire me? If you know better. Let me tell you what I've had it with. Okay. And I mean, this just really gets me riled up. Okay. You run into somebody Mm -hmm. and they say, oh my gosh, I saw you the other day at Whole Foods, but you didn't say hi to me. I hate those people. I hate those people. Because here's what it is. Mm -mm. why are you the fucking victim? Because if I would have seen you, 
I would have said hello to you. So really, you're the asshole in this situation because you saw me and you didn't say hello because I'm not some wallflower. If I would have seen you, I would have said, hey, right. How are you? But all of this like narcissism and main character syndrome, when somebody sees me out in public, I'm going to put the burden on them right, to come say hello to me. Right. And if they don't, then at a later date or in a passive aggressive text message or behind their back to another friend, I'm going to say they didn't say hello to me. And I think we collectively as a society need to start calling these people out. Exactly. If somebody says, I saw pumps the other day at the mall and she didn't say hi to me. What I'm going to say now is why the fuck didn't you say hi to her? Exactly. Because did she see you? I mean, obviously this is the person's problem that they think everybody should stop what they're doing, drop everything and go over and say hello to this person. And I've had it. Oh, I've so had it with that. And I hate it when you go to a social function and you're like chit chatting or whatever. And you talk to the people that you see first da, 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 and then somebody you get to them and they're like, well, I didn't even think you were going to say hi to me. I'm like, what the fuck? Are you five? This victimhood thing. It's ridiculous. It's this total titty baby victimhood where they put the burden on everybody right. else to approach them. And they're right when they walk into the place, they're already setting everybody up for, for failure. failure. And it's like, and when somebody does that to me, then I think, you know what? I don't know if I ever want to say hi to them again. Right. I want to avoid them at all costs. Because this is a high maintenance relationship. Obviously. With very little interaction. Right. And we've already jumped to this. And it's just this, it's it's total main character syndrome where everybody thinks, look, I've arrived at Lululemon and everybody that is even remotely like maybe friends of friends of Facebook friends <laughs> needs to come up to me right. and greet me. And if they don't, then I'm going to cause a big stink about it. Or how about the ones that were like, well, I saw you and you didn't say hi to me. So I thought you were mad at me. Bitch, I don't even think about you. So I can't be mad. <laughs> I mean, like, stop. It, that's, the, and that's the thing where people, I think, I thought you were mad at me. And I'm like, Okay, I just want to make something crystal clear. If I'm mad at you, you will know. You're going to fucking be well aware of it. Correct. And if we are not on close enough terms that you see me, that you don't feel the instinct to go across the room to say, hey, Jennifer, how are you? We haven't gotten to the stage in our relationship where we could be mad at each other. Agree. One million percent. These are the titty baby, high maintenance. Yes. Everybody has to do something for me. This is about me. These are the people, you know what? These are the people whose parents totally titty babied them and probably had gender reveals for them. (laughs) And this is the outcome of that. This is what happens when you have gender reveals. This is what happens when you are the main character at all times around your parents. If your parents don't say to you, listen, you are so special to me. You are so incredibly special to me, but out in the world, you're really not that special. You're just another human out there sucking up oxygen. And the parents that, you know, ingrain entitlement into their kids, these are the monsters that are torturing women like you and me. (laughs) When we're out at a fucking grocery store and they say, I saw you in the produce aisle and you didn't say (laughs) hi to me. And maybe I should just start saying, you know why I didn't say hi to you? Number one, I didn't see you. And number two, I don't fucking like you anymore. (laughs) Because of this conversation. Because we're broken up now because my idea of aging is making my life smaller. Right. And getting high maintenance, titty baby, people demanding victim, main character syndrome, people like you the fuck out of it. So thank you so much for identifying yourself as a needy victim person because you're off the list. Right. Now we don't have to, we never have to look at each other again. We don't have to say hi. We don't have to do any of it. Welcome to I've Had It Podcast. (laughs) I want to welcome everybody to I've Had It Podcast. We saw you all in Apple reviews and you didn't say hi to us. (laughs) I didn't get a hello. Did you? I didn't get a hello. Kylie? No one said hi to me. No one said hi to you in the in the social media? No, but they should. Yeah, I've had it. Had it. Kylie, what, speaking of social media, what's going on with social media? I've got a comment from Aaron1842 
that I want to read to you. Okay. okay. He said, number one listener here. And yes, I gave myself the title. <laughs> Seemed up for grabs. My wife and I have now completed your entire back catalog. What the fuck are we supposed to do now? <laughs> Talk with each other? Nope. <laughs> it's time for Jennifer and Pumps to quit their cute little day jobs. I mean, really, how many Hawaii vacation homes can you design, Jennifer? And how many marriages can you tear asunder, Pumps? <laughs> My wife and I require a podcast five days a week. Stop being lazy twats and make it happen. <laughs> I like him. I fucking I love who him. calls us lazy twats. I'm in. I fucking love Aaron. Yes. You know what? Aaron would not be the guy that said, I saw you, but you didn't say hi no. to me. He'd march his twat ass right up to us <laughs> and say, would. what are you two twats doing in yes. here? What are y'all doing at Lululemon? Right. He would. I like it. I, the lazy twats. Love. And so that is the direct path to our heart. Right. Yeah. I like Aaron a lot. I do too. He and his wife, what are we supposed to do? Talk to each other? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe take a girl's trip and a boy's trip. And I love the honesty because yes. it's like, look, you know, at some point you get into a relationship where you kind of look over at your partner and you're like, I, I really don't have anything to say anymore. Right. But that's the beauty of having a long-term partner is yes. you don't feel any pressure. Silent companionship. Silent. That's what you and I are great at. We are so good. So good at it. It's sitting together yes. in silence. Yes. We can share hotel rooms. Right. We can sleep in the same bed. Yeah. And we both do our own thing. Sit on the beach for eight hours. We might say five words to each other or we might talk the entire time. But either way, it's fine. That's right. It's so great. It's absolutely fine. Richard. Yes, ma'am. We haven't had a check-in from you in a while. What the fuck's going on in your world? You know what? Kylie sent me something the other day that made me just feel amazing. Okay. Aww. Kylie, you remember that comment you sent me? It was a review, actually, on iTunes. I do. It was like, Team Richard. Yes, I said it, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I mean, here's the deal, listener. I want all of you to know that Richard is our sound engineer. Yes, and he is so awesome. And you hear from him episode to episode, but he's always in a super positive mood. Never seen him with a frown. Always happy. And he's so happy. He's a much better person than Pumps a and I are. A thousand percent better. He's not a lazy twat. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a very kind person. Pumps, now that you have your Simply Safe hooked up in your home, right. do you feel safer? I actually do. And I didn't think I felt unsafe before, but I really do feel safer. Do you feel more secure? I do feel more secure. You know why? Because if an intruder breaks into your house, Simply Safe professional monitoring agents can actually see, speak to, and deter them through the new smart alarm wireless indoor camera, warning them that police are on their way. And listener, we must protect pumps <laughs> at all costs here at I've Had It because she is a national treasure and the star of our shows. So Simply Safe is an integral part of security at I've Had It. Right now, I've Had It listeners get 20% off any Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. This huge offer is for a limited time only. So visit simplysafe.com slash had it. That's simplysafe.com slash had it. There is no safe like Simply Safe. Pumps, did you know that most bedding is made with harsh chemicals like formaldehyde, synthetic pesticides, and toxic dyes? No. I know it's alarming, but there is one company changing the standard for good. Bowl and Branch. Have you heard of the sheet company? Yes, because they're my favorite sheets of all time. These sheets, I'm not even kidding you. They're so soft. It just feels like you're wrapping yourself in like butter. They're the best. Are they breathable? Oh my gosh, so cool. You know, I'm a night sweater and there's no sweating in the Bowl and Branch sheets. That is amazing. They're the only sheets that get softer with every wash. They're so luxurious. They're loved by four U.S. presidents. If it's good enough for the President of the United States, it's good enough for pumps. <laughs> Sleep better at night with Bowl and Branch sheets. Get 15% off your first order when you use promo code HADIT at bowlandbranch.com. That's Bowl and Branch, B O L L A N D, branch.com. Promo code HADIT. Exclusions apply. See site for details. All right. So, Pumps, we have a fantastic guest today. I'm Instagram friends with her. Her name is Lisa Traeger. She's a stand-up comedian and the host of That's Messed Up podcast. And she is in the new Netflix series, Survival of the Thickest. Lisa, how are you? 
I am so excited to be here. This is a thrill. We're excited to have you. We're Thanks ex- for coming. We're excited to have you. We're fired up. We got. Pretty- I know. I got- was actually humiliated. I got into your comments section a week <laughs> or two ago. Oh, yeah. And that never feels good afterwards. You're like, why am I fighting with these people? But <laughs> yeah. I, I did get in there. You know, those people, and I think all of us who listen to this podcast, we know when we say those people, what we're talking about. Those people, it's explosive diarrhea in the comment section is all it is. It stinks. It's ugly. It's messy. It is like a diarrhea cult is what it is. <laughs> of the mouth and the fingers. Yes. Keyboard courage, cult, diarrhea. Yeah. I'm going to steal that. I love that. Diarrhea <laughs> cult. It's a diarrhea cult. Okay. So, you know, you, you kind of know what we're about now. We don't give a fuck and we like to shit talk. All right. I mean, we just want to jump right into it. Tell us what you've had it with. I'm wound up like a cheap clock today. Let's just fucking tear it up. It is. Um, so uh, I think I made a list of 45. I've had it. <laughs> And it was the them- most <laughs> thorough list. It's high quality shit talking. So let's I'm just going to let you go at it because I have it all printed out right here and highlighted. I've done my I've done my homework. I've had it with parents who think they are suddenly magically better people that they have floated on to a new plane of existence that didn't exist before they they had parents. And it's like, you're still a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is a parent. The Karens on the on the internet are parents. Like right. Putin has children. Like <laughs> right. bad right. people have kids. You cannot um, just use them as an like being like, well, I'm obviously a better person now that I have a kid. You really have to focus on it. And this came to light because one of my friends, she one time was telling me like, you know, you wouldn't get it, but being a mother opens up your heart. Um, you just, your heart is more open. And then that same week, she told me that her family is moving up a hill to be further away from homeless people. <gasps> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, so where is this open heart of yours? And if it's just <laughs> open to just your child and you're actually a worse person, because now you actually love a thing more than anything else. And you don't care about other people <laughs> and it's fine, but admit it. You love your kids so much, you don't give a shit if all of us die. And that's okay. (laughs) And see, that's the thing. I can't relate to when I had my kids, I had to start like it, it, it takes everything out of you. And there's no question the love you feel for the kid is different than you feel for other human beings. Um, Especially in those, you know, really early years, it's like, oh, my God, I made this. I'm responsible for this. But I didn't have this, oh, my God, I'm a much better person all around. If anything, it made me a worse person yeah. because I slept less. Um, sometimes I forgot to brush my teeth in the infant days. Like it would right. be five o'clock in the afternoon and I'd be like, oh, my God, my breath and the plaque <laughs> on my teeth is unacceptable. I didn't like have the energy to like fix myself up. And I think the early days of being a parent, it's it really made me a worse person. I was probably a lot bitchier, not as nice. I didn't look as good. I just told you what was going on with my fucking teeth and breath and it was not good. Yeah. None of it's good at all. No, at least you have an excuse. What's up with all the other bad breath people. (laughs) I actually, my mom, cause I don't want to have children. And my mom one time was crying and she's like, I just want you to experience this. I'm just so sad. And then I said, I think you're actually mad because you want me to have a kid. So you know how hard it is. So um, (laughs) I could think about you and know what, how intense it was. And she stopped crying and she goes, "Hmm, maybe you're right. (laughs) (laughs) She wanted you punished. Yeah. A part of it too. I talk about with my friends, with the uh, parents, like when they kind of push you to do what they did and it's like, but you look miserable. All you do is complain about (laughs) your life. And yet you're telling us to do exactly what you did, which is wild. But they also love us. So I get it. That's true. I know I called you the night of, but I'm going to remind you. I was at a football game two years ago in a really small town in Oklahoma. And they were introducing their homecoming court. And the girls, you know, they said, this is Jane Doe. And she wants to go to the University of Oklahoma and study whatever. This gal said, my name is Jane Doe. I want to find my husband get married, have five kids and five dogs. And I was just like, who let her say that out loud? Where is her mother? I mean, I was 
horrified. I'll tell you where mother is. She's on her knees at the fucking church praying, praying that, that comes that thing comes to fruition. But it's shocking this is, in two thousand twenty one. Like cultural generational thing, especially where we live. It's like people getting married in their early twenties and it's like, you know, these poor girls, you know, they probably either are saving themselves for virginity or or they've already been fucking their boyfriend and they've got to get married really quickly so that they can rectify it with God and all this stuff. And so then can you imagine that like that's the only person they fucked their whole life? No, I think that's it's a- probably some pink armed gyrator <laughs> that sits around and watches Tucker Carlson all the time. And that's their life. And their moms are sitting around praying for this to happen for them. <laughs> that's what they're asking the it's Lord hor- for. It's horrifying. I mean, I got like a red hot chili pepper tattoo at 19. I can't imagine. (laughs) They're making good decisions that young. Okay, here's something that you put on your list that I totally am into. Yes. And it's you've had it with people like if you're traveling out of town and you're going to a, a, a location where you know a couple people and they ask you, how long are you in town for? Or why didn't you call me since you were in town? And from my vantage point, I'm like... I'm getting the fuck out of town so I don't have to do this shit. <laughs> like, I don't want appointments. That's that's why I'm getting the fuck out of the town I live in is to get away from having to meet and talk to people I know. I want to be around people, but I don't want any of them to know one fucking thing about me. Yeah. And I just don't want to say the same thing over and over. I go to New York a lot. I do have a lot of friends there. And I just feel like 12 times a day, it's like, how long are you staying? When are you leaving? What, how, where are you, where are you staying? It's like, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> just talk to me. I don't, who cares where I'm staying or when I'm leaving? I'm not going to hang out with you again. This is our one dinner. Let's make the most of it. I just hate being a broken record. <laughs> and because I have so many friends in New York, I'll try to like stagger and then one trip, see some friends, the next trip I'll see others. And I have one friend in particular who's always like, wow, so you didn't call me yet. I th- I guess you don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I saw you last time. We had a great dinner. I'm just trying to, ca- well, I, where are you staying? I can't believe you didn't ask me to stay. And I'm like, I actually don't like you anymore and I will never see you again. I'm done texting. <laughs> we you. were just talking yes. about this before we had you on. So one of the biggest things I've had it with is when you run into somebody and they say, I saw you last week at Whole Foods, but you didn't say hi to me. And I'm like, bitch, I didn't see you or I would have said hi to you. And so this is the same thing that happens out of town. Wait, you were in New York and you didn't call me and say hi to me? And it's like, it's such main character syndrome for people to think that when you're traveling out of town, whether it be for work, pleasure, whatever, that you're going to have them as the nucleus of your travel plans. And it's like, what the fuck? actual fuck is going on in your brain that you think that Lisa is going to plan her entire New York <laughs> right. trip around facilitating a coffee date with you. It's or it's the opposite too when people message you and they're like, I'm in town and it's like, okay, well have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to hang I don't know what to tell you. I have a full life here. Right. And I guess they think we're closer than we are. I have no idea. I just don't like the high maintenance of it where the best friends, the most people like the most fun I have with a person, they don't care about any of that. I have one friend. It's like, guess what? I'm here. I'm in your neighborhood. Are you free? Yes, I'm free. Let's have guacamole. Right. That is that's amazing. I like people that aren't mad at me. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want friends that are mad at me or I have to feel on edge or I'm doing something wrong. I'm I've matured past that. I can't do it. I don't right. want to feel like I'm in trouble. I think the older I feel you free. Right. The older you get, the less your tolerance for high maintenance people gets. And so they just start falling out of your life and you're like, bye bye. The great thing about pumps and me, like 15, 20 years ago, we're like, let's stop buying each other birthday gifts. Let's stop buying each other Christmas gifts. Because really, it's a burden to have to go out and buy somebody a gift. So we don't buy each other anything. I mean, we text each other on our birthdays, typically go to lunch or dinner or something. But we can travel together. We were just talking about this. We can sit on an airplane and not say one fucking word to each other. (laughs) We can share the hotel room. We can go 10 hours and not talk to each other and not say one fucking word to each other. Or we can drag out dead horses of shit we've talked about for 20 years and beat the ever living shit out of them with the same enthusiasm (laughs) as though it were the first time we ever beat that fucker. I mean, we just, it's a really great friendship when you say, you know what, just be yourself. 
you don't have to maintain me. You don't have to maintain my, my uh, emotions. You, that's a, that's a beautiful friendship. That's yeah. all it is about talking shit about the same people. <laughs> totally. <laughs> over and, and over and over. It is. I think about my best friend and sometimes I'll go to New York. She's there and people will be like, what'd you do? I go, I laid on her couch. We were each on a cell phone and Bravo was on the television <laughs> for 12 hours. It was perfect. And, and then her boyfriend cooked us dinner like that it, to me is heaven. And then you have the other friends that are like, why didn't you message me? And it's like, because I sat in silence with my best friend. <laughs> yes. As women fought on my screen. And that's all I wanted. <laughs> exactly. What about, and I think this is one of your habits, and this is one of the best cases I've ever seen. People that have opinions online and that post their opinions online, yet they have a private profile. It gets me going. I think <laughs> if you have a private profile, you should not be able to comment mean th or anything on anyone. Agree. Um, because I'm, um, you know, we're we're like more public. We're putting stuff out, opinions. We're putting ourselves out there. Right. And so, someone in the middle of nowhere with a private profile, I don't think it's fair that you get to. I'm put. I'm so vulnerable, and you get to just insult me, say horrible things, and then I go on your page. I want to see what you look like. What's going on here? <laughs> right. That's not fair. I want to see You're who you on. follow. It's so tough. Sometimes people write such mean things and I do go on their profile and it takes all of my restraint not to like find a photo of their mom and be like, ew. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an anonymous letter from back in the day. It's a social media anonymous letter. It is. It is. And that sucks. If you don't have the balls to tell people what your name is with your shit, you can't say your shit. That's what I think. I agree. I think in Mark Zuckerberg needs to institute. Right. If you're going to troll on the internet. If you to enable your comment, you have to verify that this is you. Right. And have a photograph of you. Right. And then you can let it rip because you're right. I mean, we are we promote our you know podcast. You promote your comedy and your podcast on social media. We put our opinions out there, and then you've got fucking Karen over here that lives in you know small town Ohio, just trolling the fuck out of you. And it's like, well, let's see what's well, let's see what you're made of. I want to kind of get in your shit a little bit. Yeah, I mean, and then some friends will be like, it doesn't matter. It's for the algorithm. If if it's positive or negative, it's all good. And I'm like, my brain cannot handle it. And my mom's on my Instagram. I can't have my mom <laughs> seeing people write mean things about me. She made me like she doesn't want to see that. Oh, so it bothers me that you're like my mom has to then read mean things. I mean, she should get a life too. <laughs> like, reading everything on my page, but she does. And it bothers me so much and sometimes it'll be like their little profile photo is them with kids going back to the first thing you think right. you're so great and you're speaking to me wildly right wildly. you would never allow your child to speak like that to anybody but yet you're no. doing it but also mark zuckerberg should be tried for war crimes and <laughs> i believe that too like, <laughs> i think what he's created is not good. I wish him and Elon Musk did a uh, fist fight. I guess one of their mothers stopped it. From yes. And what's no, what? what? OK, so Elon Musk <laughs> and Mark Zuckerberg floated this thing where they were going to like cage fight each other. And I'm like, OK, is this how bad capitalism has got? That right. if you're a billionaire, you're going to go in a submarine and go try to look at the Titanic or you're going to launch yourself into space. And then we're going to get two billionaires to fist fight each other. And it's like, OK, here's what we need to do, guys. Let's just line you all up. Up. Pumps will have a tape measure. Right. I'll have a tape measure. Lisa, you can have a tape measure. We'll do all sorts of measurements. The room cold. I mean, how shriveled up is that dick? Then? Right. Just hanging in room temperature. You know, I'm talking about 70 degrees, fully erect. Right. I mean, we'll just get all the measurements. Get we the can girth. post it on Twitter, right. which is Elon Musk. We can just post all the results out and then let's just be fucking done with all this shit. Yeah. It's ridiculous. There are no good billionaires. If they, if there were, our problems would be so they would help communities instead of going into space. So anyone that idolizes these people find a new idol. It's wild to me, and I think money would fulfill me. I really do. I don't. <laughs> right. I don't understand. I don't. Right. I would be yeah, such yeah. a good billionaire. I would be too. I would <laughs> fucking crush that shit. I would too. I would crush the fuck out of that stuff. I mean, I would be 
so private about it. Yep. I would have a boat. I'm going to have all the fucking toys. I don't think I would have social media. No, I wouldn't either. I would fucking crush being a billionaire. Yeah. You know who crushes as a billionaire is LeBron James with that school that he makes oh, and he sends yeah. kids to college. Yes. I mean, that's the kind of billionaire I want to be. Pam, you know what I've had it with? What? Giant pill vitamins. The worst. They always make you have the weird taste in your mouth afterwards. And it's like so uncomfortable as it like goes down your throat and your upper chest. Yeah, it's like you can feel it. It's like you can feel it moving down there and it's so unnatural. I find myself having to take 10 different pills to get everything I want. And it's like taking these giant horse pills and I'm choking on them. It's <laughs> miserable. The experience is not enjoyable at all. But thankfully, I found a better way with Healthy Cell and they make these gel vitamins, not pills, their gels. They actually taste good and make me want to take them every day. Specifically, I use the Joint Health and Mobility Gel, which as we know as an athlete, joint <laughs> health and mobility is something that you're seeking constantly. So this gel has completely transformed my pickleball and tennis game. Listener, you too can transform your game and your life by going to healthycell.com slash had it and use promo code had it to get 20% off your first order. That's healthycell.com slash had it to get 20% off your first order with promo code had it. So pumps, I finally caved and tried skims and it totally lives up to the hype. They're incredible products. The products are amazing. The underwear is game changing. I'm never going back. Well, and the bras are so comfortable. The t-shirt bras and the regular bras, there's no spillage. And if you're big busted, that's a big deal. I'm so glad you have dealt with the spillage factor. I know. It's a big deal. It's a huge deal. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear for every body. The Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight and molds to your body. The buttery soft fabric stretches to twice its size without ever losing shape, meaning you get the perfect fit every time. Available in sizes XXS to 4X. Believe the hype. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Skims fits everybody and more best-selling essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus, you can get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, be sure to let them know that Pumps and I sent you. Select podcast in the survey and be sure to select I've had it in the drop down menu that follows. You know what's so interesting, though, is there is a, a, a portion of the population that really likes, and I should say really loves, like total narcissistic dick rich people. You've got people that fucking go bananas over Donald Trump. And he's a total dick. I mean, that's just not even remotely likable, clever, nor right. intelligent. The same thing with Elon Musk. And they just go fucking bananas. And I'm like, like, I get like you said, LeBron James, Roger Federer, there are people that you can really like that are like really good people. But this whole adoration towards like, you know, this guy's this huge, you know, he's such a dick. I really like him. It's so weird. I know. It's so gross, too. Well, yesterday, a Tesla did not let me merge. So Fuck that. <laughs> I don't like Teslas. Fuck Teslas. Fuck Teslas. I c it's like, sorry, I didn't realize the lane was ending. Let me in. I'm not a, a I'm not trying to get one on you. You're not so chronically do you chronically wait till the very end and try to get in it? Or was this just kind of a one time thing? No, I was just truly not aware. I was talking okay. to my dad on speaker. I was dry. And then I went, oh, there's parked cars. I got to get in here. Right. And she wouldn't let me in. And I'm like, <laughs> "What? we're crawling in traffic. My bad. But I have done it on purpose, for sure, if I'm running late. But yeah. I let people in because I've run late. If I'm going to a doctor's appointment, or, like I just assume someone, if someone is waiting until the end, maybe they're just a jerk. But I just assume they're like, running late and I got to let him in. Oh, you're a better person out. than me. <laughs> I'm always like, no motherfucker. <laughs> but are you someone that's always on time? Never. I just ratted myself out to Jennifer. I, I do want to point out to our what? listener that Pumps just admitted that she's never on time. So everybody can go back 15 episodes where she died on the hill, <laughs> that she was a punctual person. I want this noted in the permanent record. Kylie will make a entry into the permanent I just record. Fucked myself. Because you just fucking owned yourself. I this did. is a beautiful day. <laughs> this is a great day for me and me only because she just fucking told the truth. <laughs> Okay, 
Uh, Lisa, we want to do a lightning round with you. So this is oh, had amazing. it or hit it. Okay, tell us if you've had it with this stuff or if you'd hit it. Oh my God. Welcome to had it or hit it. I would hit it. Had it. Had it. I hit it every day, sometimes twice a day. Okay. One-sided toilet paper holders. You know I've had it. <laughs> <laughs> When I grew up, the toilet paper holder had two sides right. and the pressure held it together and you can like pull, rip the paper off yep. in any direction you wanted. I, the ones that now they're like only in on top and then they swing down and the hook is just open. The toilet paper is always flying yep. <laughs> or at my parents' house, I keep ripping it and the thing whole, fully breaks off and flies. My parents <laughs> refuse to fix it. And I just feel like. I need more support. So I take it off of the thing, hold it on my hand and rip the toilet paper off. And I just, why the swinging thing? I, it's always falling off or the toilet paper is falling off and I can't just rip it off with one hand and it bothers me. So <laughs> I think much. you're bringing up, I think the quality of toilet paper holders is diminishing. The, everything is getting better and more right. efficient as you know we have uh, driven more into the modern world. Toilet paper... It really is. They're coming out of the walls. Toilet paper's flying off. Back in the 80s, we had a secure right, it was. toilet paper holder that was mounted on two sides and you had the little, you had to squeeze right. it, put the toilet paper on. It was secure. It was there for you. And now toilet paper holders have just gone to shit and nobody's talking about it except for you, Lisa. Because it's such an issue for me. But it's, I think design stuff goes down like right now in hotels too i hate that it's all like half a glass with the shower hate like it. european style hate that i i don't get why i can't have a full <laughs> door and exactly tub, like, full, coverage. Yes. Steam. Yes. full coverage full coverage in the shower i think is mandatory okay lisa had it or hit it shirts with words i'll hit it i'd, I'd hit it yeah Okay, let, let's talk about the nuances of that. Okay, in the shirts with words family, you can have, you know, a shirt that says mama bear on it, <laughs> right? <laughs> or you can have a shirt that says country girl, or you can have one that says, you know, don't tread on me. Those are bad, but I have one that says napping all day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so I think I've decided I selectively like shirts. Right. Words. It has to be a, uh, like a hashtag blessed. I'm out. Had it with the word blessed. I've had it. Yeah. No, I mean, can't I do have that. had it up to my eyeballs. I used to just be the hashtag that irritated me. I've moved on to anybody who like a guy just delivered UPS in my office and he handed me the box and he said, have a blessed day. And I just stood there with my jaw open thinking, does he not know that I don't like the word blessed, which of course he doesn't, well, but it just how would he irritates know? the, have a blessed day as opposed, why can't have we just have a, have a good day? day? Right. Have a good Who day. Who the fuck is out there blessing my day? <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? What does that mean? What I'm looking for is just to have a normal day on a scale of zero to 10. I'm trying to hit a five to six. That's it. On vacation, I'm looking for about a nine, but a five to six, a blessed day. What the fuck does that mean? Right. I've had it. I've had it up to my eyeballs with its blessed abuse and it's <laughs> rampant, especially where we live. I mean, the blessed thing is thrown out nonstop and I've had it up to my eyeballs with it. I mean, I've had it. Yeah, I, I think um, I'm not more I'm not in blessed circles. I'm in living <laughs> the dream. Oh, oh, that's what I hear a lot. Oh, uh, live in the dream. And it's like, I don't know. You're like a teacher. Are you? Like, are you living the hard. dream? How about the YOLO? I mean, I if I have to hear yellow one more time, you only live once. You only, but just the the hashtag yellow just makes me. I haven't heard crawl. that in a while. Yeah, uh, I heard it. Oh, so you live out in the suburbs, so you're still people <laughs> catch on late. You've got all these late bloomers out there throwing out shit. I haven't heard yellow in ten years. No, I just know exactly where I heard it. It's the suburbs, isn't it? If we're talking just words, manifest. That's, that's oh, what I oh, we did an I entire hate. episode about that. Hate manifestors. That is the biggest jet stream of bullshit when somebody says that they manifested something. It is such bullshit. You got to hustle. You right. got to work. You can't just sit around and make a fucking mood board and then like, you know, practice your penmanship. I want to have a yacht. I want to <laughs> have a plane. And then that fucking shit falls out of the sky. I mean, I'm up to my eyeballs had it with that shit. 
Another thing we've had it with on this podcast are journeys. <laughs> I'm in a journey. Um, yeah, I just feel bad because I think I've said it, but I agree. I, I need to stop. Yeah. <laughs> the journeys have got to stop. You can either be a part of the problem or a part of the solution. Right. And right here, this podcast is about solutions. <laughs> yeah. about a drug journey? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a trip? That's just a trip. That's a yes. trip. No, you're right. Yeah, you're that's right. That's a trip. A trip. No. Yeah. We don't I'm need- part of the problem and I... From this day on, I will I will stop. I've got my journey. eyes on your Instagram account. So if I see <laughs> yeah. any journey violation, we're going to march your ass back onto this podcast and call you out. Okay, had it or hit it? Inspirational quotes. Oh, I've I've love it. I've hit it. I will hit it all day. <laughs> oh, no, it's like my religion. I want an inspirational quote. It no. helps me. It like. I really, if I get, if I read a good quote, I screenshot, I'll send it, I'll keep it in my heart. I really, I love quotes. Do You're you all chips them? in. Do you post the inspirational quotes? I I make them the background of my phone, um, so I can look at it. But I don't think I actually repost. Okay, publicly, that's good. But because I, I just yeah. pumps and I are not contrary to what you may think after having been on this podcast for you know the last 30 45 minutes with us we are not licensed therapists <laughs> right. but one theory that we do have is that people that post inspirational quotes frequently on social media that it is a red flag right yeah and it's another red flag and another they're basically you know, screaming, it's a cry for help. And we advise our listeners slash patients to run <laughs> from these types of people. No, you're so right. You're on, on a slippery people. slope. This is a slippery slope. If you start posting that, it's just like with this right. journey thing. I mean, I think you're dipping your toes in. This could be a gateway. Putting it on your screensaver, yeah. this could be a gateway to you ultimately being a red flag. <laughs> We're just trying to help. I agree. I don't put because I think the people that post a lot of inspirational quotes are the same people that like are empaths. Um, I think th- those are um, overlined. I just the quote that I had on my phone, I'm a shit talker. And one was like, um, the more shit you talk, like the less trustworthy you are and you want to be trustworthy. And I was like, oh, yeah, I want people to think I'm very trustworthy. <laughs> and so that was like a reminder I needed. But it, I, I still gossip. I don't know. I'm lying. I'm um, I'm on the stand and I'm spiraling. I <laughs> what to do? I, I guess I've been called a red flag and I don't I'm handling it. <laughs> <laughs> but you've never been inspired by a quote. Um, what about like an inspirational video of like a it. champion? No. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> If it was like about Rafa Nadal or Roger Federer and it was like yeah. a video of their tennis career, I would be tapping the vein, injecting. I'd be lining it up, getting my straw out, snorting it. I would totally yeah, but it, love that. You would love the video, but it wouldn't like inspire change in your life. It might in- inspire some change in my tennis game. Well, okay. That's your best bet. Right. But you're not going to like go start feeding the poor and a third world country because you're so inspired. Are by you it. suggesting that I'm not philanthropic and don't care for starving children? <laughs> is that, is that saying, the suggestion? That's here? a big ass to watch a video <laughs> and then go like save the world. I'm just not a save the world type. I know that's shocking. We have one more had it or hit Ooh. it with for you. Online dating apps. For me, I've had it for others I, on vacation. I'll, I'll hit it. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> tell me that. about that i get on tinder on vacation okay that's when i'm if i'm in new orleans i'm in london i'm on tinder let's let's have sex okay but for, and i've had a few dates but in terms of like it being successful for me to meet someone or getting the matches that i desire that's not happening for me um but when i am doing when i meet a couple and they have a tinder love story i'm a hopeless romantic like it gets me going i like that but yeah tough oh this is actually this combines the dating and what we were just talking about i follow this one dating coach on instagram called a little nudge and she says never write anything in your bio that could anyone could write you want it to be specific to you you don't want a platitude then no one knows anything about you you have to be specific. That's a good that point. Was... It's also interesting that you follow a dating coach. I mean, <laughs> if you think we're just going to let that slide here, you're talking to the wrong fucking bitches. <laughs> well, I want to be. I want to be in love. I'd like to meet a partner. You know, so I, 
she helped me be more direct in my communication. A I like little that. Nip. I like that too. You know, I think that uh, the more you get to know yourself and if you can learn how to be a better partner and delay getting married and delay getting in serious relationships, I think it's really healthy because the divorce rate is not good. Right. Thank God for me. Well, Lisa, we cannot thank you enough. Oh, this was a dream. You guys are so funny. It's like such a joy every time you're in my um, feed. And I love I just love it. It's um, it's really such a great podcast. Thank we you. love you. And I'm going to keep my eyes out for a few right. things on your Instagram journey, manifesting inspirational. Quotes. <laughs> yeah. You are now on watch. <laughs> She's okay. elevated your you're status. You're on the watch list. Yeah, you're okay? on the watch list Because I, I think that there's a slippery slope gateway situation going on. I'm glad that we cracked the case here in this last episode, but we, we, you are on watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will work at, um, to not be a red flag and be inspired <laughs> by actual change in my life, not quotes. That's, That's right. Lisa, you are awesome, smart, beautiful, and we cannot thank you enough. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Okay. Good luck on your Bye. tour. Yes, good luck. Bye-bye. How fun is she? So fun. So fun. I love that we, you know, I love her honesty. I do too. It's nice. That she's like, you know, I kind of do love an inspirational quote. <laughs> and she, and she kind of like told us why. Yeah. I, I love that. And she's inspired by them. Totally. So like, there she's... are people that just think we're assholes, which is probably true. I think we are assholes. I don't think there's any question about it. Yeah, I think we are assholes. I do think there is inspirational quote abuse. A hundred percent. On t-shirts, yes. On the internet, on t-shirts, on a lot of things. And I, back to the shirts with words things, I just want to remind our <laughs> listener that we oppose shirts with words, but you can also go to at I've had it podcast <laughs> and buy a shirt that says I've had it, um, which we support. Absolutely. That's the exception. The only exception. But I think they've figured out by now half the shit we say we hate, we do. Total hypocrites. <laughs> Total. What, lazy twats. Lazy twats. We should put that word, those two words on a shirt. Lazy twats. Listener, be sure to look up to see if the hot shit tour is going to be at a city near you. We would love to see you. Follow us on all platforms and please go to Apple and give us five stars right. and call us lazy twats, but only if you give five stars. <laughs> okay. Only five stars and any rude comment you want to make. That's right. We'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, bye listener. We will see you when we see in pumps. We will see you next Tuesday. Or Thursday, or both. Pumps nails it every time. The clap. No, I sometimes forget. I'll tell you what I've had it with. Let's hear it. <laughs>